it already. Um, he didn't really talk much on his decision, but he, he talked about how he left school early. Well, with me, I choose I chose to leave school early just because of the year that I had at NC State, but also um, because of injury and just uh, opportunity. Um, I feel like uh, my mom always tells me when opportunity knocks at the door, you take it while it's still there. If not, then it won't be anymore. And um, Cody, you know, because like you said, you were there during my draft process and everything. Um, that was a large part of me um, declaring for the draft early was just – um, I wanted to grab opportunity while I was knocking at the door for me. No doubt. Same with same with me. Just strike all iron tide. I'm a running back too. Like I can get hurt. Uh, it's just it was hard. And then just also too, just believing in myself. And also with Didi, just like having inside knowledge. Uh, the reason I really left early is because I got word from the NFL basically that uh, they're preparing for me to come out. And uh, basically, if I came back another year, it wouldn't help my draft stock at all. Mm-hmm. I've done all. I- they told me I did returns, kick return, part return. I played receiver for two years and had a good year running back. So there's really – once I heard that, I mean, I knew I was leaving because there was no point. I was going to risk injury to not get drafted higher. That's how I felt. For sure. And I, I feel like injury was that, – that's a, that's a big uh, reason for a lot of people, even not knowing their stories. But I bet you a lot of guys will tell you that the reason they choose to left their, their junior year is because the money was there and it was on the table and they didn't want to they didn't want to risk injury and then there would be nothing on the table. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I definitely understand that. Um, so, Naheem, let me ask you. I'll ask this question for both you and Will. What was your first moment, like, when you got in the NFL? Like, maybe it was you were on the field with a player you looked up to or idolized growing up where you were like, oh, shit, I'm really in the NFL. Like, I'm really here. Uh, uh-huh. Um, probably my first day. My first day in my second game. My first day uh, – I remember walking into the locker room, and I could, you know Andrew has a very distinctive voice, and he was like three lockers down for me. I'm like, oh, crap. I remember him saying, like, hey, hey Naheem, uh, you had a great career in NC State, been following you, I can't wait to work with you. And he was asking, we were going over the office, he's like, I heard you're really smart, like, I know you're going to know some of the plays, we were talking about the plays. He was like, oh, I'm Andrew, by the way. And I was like, I know who you are. But uh, <laughs> Andrew, like, for the first time, that's how I met Andrew. Like, Andrew's a very – don't know about Andrew. Andrew's very, very misunderstood. He's a very, very genuine guy. Andrew, that's what keeps makes him a great leader. Not because of how he is on the field. It's his, him being a very genuine person. But I think my real moment was really uh, my second game of my career against the Washington Redskins, Adrian Peterson. Everybody everybody in this generation knows about Adrian Peterson. My man <laughs> over here for 2,000 yards. And my teammate, uh, Jordan Wilkins, one of my good friends on the team, he's a running back too. He got drafted the same year as me. He said, we were warming up. And he said, Naheem, did you ever think like – even two years ago, that you would be on the same field as AP. And my answer was literally, hell no. And that was really – and then I got to talk to AP after the game. He actually talked to me and gave me some great advice. And that's really when I got to shake his hand and talk to him. I was like, dang, like, this is crazy. Yeah, that is. It's definitely uh, – it's awesome because, like, we really look up to people with these people as, like, children. Uh, as, as kids, we look up to them, you know, and then to get out there and play with them. Um, I didn't get to play with him, but it was crazy. Uh, I think they really hit me um, – it was this year preseason game. Uh, I just had my first start at left guard ever. And uh, after the game, um, JP, Jason Peters, he was out there. And um, just off the sideline, he's a massive man. So, like, he's a huge guy. Like, I just saw him across the sideline. I'm like, yo, I got to just go say what's up to him, you know I mean? So I just walked over and I shook his hand. And I'm just like, yo, what's up, JP? I'm Will Richardson, bro. Nice to meet you and everything. And uh, that, that probably had to be my moment. Then I want to say, I don't know if it was before or after. I can't quite remember. But also just lining up in front of Indomitian Sue, bro. Uh, it was just when we played Tampa, okay. just just lining up in front of him, bro. Uh, as growing up, you hear about both on and off the field. But you just know just how of a, much of a monster this man is, you know, just – just how much yeah. of a physical specimen he is, you know. Uh, so just lining up in front of him, it was just crazy just to be like, oh, man, like I can say I lined up and blocked and Donald can sue, you know. Like it was just just a, a great moment. He gave us piss this year when we played Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even going to lie. He bull rushed me every play till my freaking uh, shield came off my fingers. I couldn't even take any more bull rushes. Like it was crazy. <laughs> I don't play off this line. <laughs> but I guess you, I got to ask you this question, bro, because uh, you're my second returner that I've had on here. Uh, great returner at that, um, um, that I've had on the, of the podcast. Um, I had Brandon Tate on last week, and um, I asked him this question here, and I got I got to ask you the same. Um, what separates uh, a good returner from a great returner? Honestly, I think it's really just the X factor. Uh, with a returner, first off, it just starts with a – especially punt return, but, like, just – handling the ball, getting a good sound of the ball, catching the ball with your feet, not your hands. And really not 
I think it's just really not having indecisiveness. And then just knowing what to do, do it when you get the ball in your hand. Like, uh, especially punt return, if you can get a good set on the ball, and, you know, I have, I have great blocking. And, you normally know, a good returner always has at least a good team to keep the guys out of their space so he can do what he does best. Okay. And I think really indecisiveness, indecisiveness – handling the ball and then, you know, just being a playmaker. I think, uh, you know, like when I get a punt return, I think I can score every time. It's like catching a screen in the middle of the field. And I think that's what it is. got to have confidence. And if you don't have confidence to go back there, you're not going to be a good returner. Yep, that's that's kind of what uh, Brandon Tate talked on, just having that heart and just having that want to, like knowing that when I get this ball, I'm going to do something with it. Like, you know, uh, he said some people have that mindset, of, oh, let me get three or four. He said you got to have that touchdown mindset every time. Is that kind of yes, what sir. you think about it? You get past, Yeah, you get past the first wave, you can do it. And also, think another two. Th- another thing too is, uh, especially in the NFL, they're better. Like they're better than the guys that you that blocked for you in high school and college. That's their job too. Like, and I think with me, I think I had a special connection with that punt return team. Like, even that's why, like, even you guys, like, when I had a good game, I you know, we, I got you guys stuff. Like those guys, every time I return a touchdown, I'm gonna always buy them stuff. And even this year, like, I was gonna give them something because you know that's a, it's a trust thing because I gotta trust them. But they also got to trust me to make a great decision and not put them in bad positions. Because anytime you know a ball is kicked short, I got to make sure I screen Peter doesn't get hit. Nobody, so nobody gets hit. And then I trust when I'm looking up in the air that they that they're beating their guy and they're straining to the finish. I think it really goes hand in hand. Ultimately, y'all are in charge of each other's job, really. <laughs> exactly. Like, I, I can't do anything if there's a guy in my face, but also they can't do anything if I'm dropping the ball and not running while I'm supposed to run. Yep. Sure. Another thing I'd like to touch on is, like, I'd like to hear your you, – you made the playoffs, correct? Yes. We, my, yeah. Talk about the difference in a playoff atmosphere game and then the regular season. I, what I'll say is, the NFL, there's different levels, at least from what I've seen. Obviously, so you have the preseason, this is the NFL. Then you have, you know, we'll to talk to you about the first part, too. Like, the first eight games, you know, yeah, they're, they're good games. But when you come back after your bye week or November and December – those games are amped up a little bit, especially those December games, especially if you're playing. Like, when you're in November, December, those games are very important. And then playoffs, it's more than that. It's more tension. You can just feel like – I remember our first playoff game, you could cut the tension with a knife on both sides. Like, it's, everybody knows the importance of the game. And then going to the playing in the wild card, then going to the second round, it's the same thing. And it's like each level – each level of – each round you get and each high – the higher you get, the harder it is. Like, the harder it is to score. And even, like, those – um. Even the games like last year that were high-scoring games, it's still just harder to score. The teams know more. They have more time to prepare. You've probably played that team before, seen that team before. So it's just really hard to, you know, get a one-up on somebody. It's really just an even game, and whoever doesn't beat themselves really wins the game. For sure. Yeah, I haven't had that experience yet, hopefully soon. But I definitely have heard a lot of the vets in the, the locker room just talking about, hey, like after the, after the first half of the season, it's like, hey, like we got to lock in. Everything we're fighting for is still in grabs, you know, because usually in the NFL, that's how it is. About that halfway point through the season, everything's still in grabs. It's still a fighting chance. But two or three games can re- ruin everything. Like you come back out of that, um, that bye week and you ain't ready to go to war, it's, it can really get bad from there. That's what happened to us because we remember the year we made the playoffs. We started out one and five, and then we ended up we won nine straight, went ten and six, and we 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 hit, we hit the by uh, five and two, and fell apart. And ended up seven and nine. So I've seen it from both sides. So it's a uh, okay. was definitely like last, the, my rookie year in 2018. We won a lot of games in November, November, December, made the playoffs. And uh, last year we did win a lot of games in November and December. And that's really what it is. If you win the games in November and December, it doesn't matter your record before that. You'll probably get in the playoffs. Yeah. True. Man, that's great stuff. Thank you for sharing that. So talk to talk a little bit about playing with Jacoby Brissett and and how, like, you know, he, he's also an NC State guy. Talk about it's, that dynamic. It's very interesting just uh, how life comes at you. Like, you never think, like, in a college quarterback leaves, like Ryan Finley, when I left, I was like, dang, I'm probably going to never play with Ryan again. I said the same thing about Jacoby. And then, dang, by the Colts, I'm like – and then Andrew retires. I'm like, dang, I'm going to need to play with Jacoby. I mean, I think it's really, really cool. I think Jacoby and I had a connection. Uh, sometimes, like, even Jacoby, I like, Jacoby would literally call my name in a game, but, like, I would already be there. I think Jacoby just knows how I run routes. He knows how I think. And uh, he's played with me before. So, I think, really, for us, we had an advantage. Gotcha. Gotcha, man. That's great. And now you got Phillip Rivers coming into the fold. And I'll just speak personally. I think you're going to have a really great year because if anybody knows anything about Phillip Rivers, the utilization of his running backs, like that's been a staple of his career since he came into the league. And he's another NC State guy. That's crazy too. Yeah, it's a lot of connections. Like like connections <laughs> that we ain't even meant to make. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like 
like this out of nowhere connections. <laughs> Dude, like that's what I'm – first off, I like to say, we get one more NC State guy, I think North Carolina is going to lose it, and they're all going to have cold flags. But uh, <laughs> like I said, life comes fast. I remember uh, my junior year uh, spring game uh, – the spring game, you know, you well, the spring game where we didn't actually have to go full on our last spring yeah. game. <laughs> Philip Rivers was there. I remember watching Philip Rivers like with a like, like some khaki pants and like a buttoned up shirt hitting the trash can from like twenty yards out, and he threw me a couple passes. Like I never thought that would be my quarterback. Philip doesn't even remember that. And I talked to Philip about it. He doesn't even really remember throwing me the ball, but I remember that. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to just play with Philip. You know, I've talked to him a lot, and uh, you know, there's I've heard a lot of like you know the hype and stuff about him with the, you know, pass catching running backs. But I really haven't – I haven't really listened to it or thought much of it. Like, somebody sent me an article about something Coach Reich said, like, two or three days ago, and I still haven't even read it because it doesn't matter. And this is all about what you go out there and do. People can mm-hmm. hype you up may not do anything. So, really, for me, it just I'm going to go out there and do what I'm supposed to do. And if it comes to – Philip want to throw me the ball, that will be nice. But – he may not throw me the ball. I might have to go in there and carry the rock. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this name of the game, man, versatility. But I like your mindset. Um, I think that's a great mindset to have. Um, everything's earned, nothing's given, and you got to go out there and produce. And I think that's awesome. Yeah, for exactly. sure. Bro. Keep working, bro, already. For sure, for sure. And the last thing I got about the Colts, man, week 16 last year, correct? Two uh, return touchdowns in one game. I think you were like the first person since like 05 or something like that to do that against the hometown team. Talk about that. Blessing. Uh, is you know, first off, it's very, very uh, humbling and also very, very just interesting that, you know, the game that it happens, it happens to be the team that I grew up watching. That's just uh, like some like that's just life, though. A lot of things in life you really can't draw up. It just happens. Like, mm-hmm. Two games, like we, there's 31 teams in the NFL. The, the game I decided, you know, break a franchise record for return yard and have two in a game because against the Panthers. I think uh, <laughs> I'm really a blessing. And uh, really, just looking back on it, I could have scored three. The first one of the game, I might could have scored that one too. So uh, there's still more to it. was a great game. I had those guys blocking for me, but there's still always room for improvement. Broke a franchise record, and I could have had. 40 more yards, so. Man, you the GOAT, Naheem, man. I know you the humblest dude ever, but you the GOAT, bro. I promise you, Naheem, you should have seen how hype I was, bro. Because you know how it is in the league. We don't get to catch nothing but ESPN. Boy, I'm catching yeah. on ESPN like it was live, boy. I'm like, <laughs> the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. I'm like, look at and then, and then this is what got me because it was like, he didn't do it again. He, I'm like, what? <laughs> bro, I was so happy for you, bro. I was so happy for you. Now. I didn't worry that so much, but that day was really a blur. If you want me to be honest, I remember it, but I don't really remember the feeling. It was just something that just – you know how it is. Sometimes when you're having your day, you just got that feeling. There ain't nothing. Yeah, bro. See, I know how it is, but I don't because I block people, fam. I don't get to return kicks. I need to know, bro. Like, how was it, bro? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so you will. You don't have some play. You don't have games where, like, put your hands on people and they were just going down. Like, yeah. I, I, I was running the ball. Like, <laughs> the return. we scored touchdowns, but a pancake block, that's like a first down or a big play. Yeah, so for sure. That's a touch. Will, come on, Will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah no, no doubt. I'm talking about from the fans' eyes, though. Just like, how was it, bro? Just like to, and I know, and I know you take you take a knee and you take you say a prayer after every touchdown, bro. But like, just how was it? Just to hear, just like the fans going crazy right in your ear, bro. Just like, just like I know that was just like a welcome to like like this stuff is paying off. I know that was a paying off moment right there. Like all your hard work, bro. I think uh, just you know, especially the rookie year, you know, I struggled a little bit. I think uh, it was really what I just needed. Uh, you know, and you will, you know how I am. You play with me. I'm like the Krispy Kreme sign. Like, if I have one good play, I'm hot. So, <laughs> you hot? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to return another one. And yeah. that's what happened. It's just that confidence. You know, each game, you just, each game you have confidence, but each game you got to go out there and make a play to really know. You know how it is. Like, no even doubt. like, like, especially as a ball player, like, uh, like a ball carrier, the guy who touches the ball. Some games you never know how it is, but you gotta really like make a first down, and do a little bit of something to really Get just. Into it. I am. I like. To, I like to build momentum for myself, and when I get momentum going, it's kind of hard to stop me. I believe. Just like anything, you got to get into a some kind of a rhythm and flow. Yeah, it's been, yeah, and I think uh, that really just that day was just it was a blur, it was a blessing, and uh, you know, end up, you know, I end up, I think we end up framing my jersey and giving it to the owner, and uh, I end up getting the game ball that day. Had to go to the podium and talk about it. It was a blessing, and just. Looking back on it, I'm just happy that, you know, my family was there. My mom was sick. She was there. she got to come to the game. My sister was there. My dad was there. Had a couple of friends. It was like everybody who was supposed to be there was actually there. They weren't watching on TV. So that's uh, – that was 
that was the best part about it, honestly. Not even the fact of the game. It was just everybody I wanted to be there was actually there. Yeah, that's dope, bro. Like I said.